Hey guys, what is going on? This is Zippo of Rage Quit TV when game two between Nestia and Hero. Of course, these are just ladder games, but this is the second game in the replay pack between these two. In the last one, Hero starting off the match the same way. Hello, it's an honor to play you, GLHF Nesty, saying, Hey, GLHF, both players are very mana. Hero just being a little bit more mana because he is going up against the legend at Nesty. And none of the translations are ever going to be 100% correct. I do my best job to give you an idea of what they're saying. It's generally always just the general gist of what they're saying. I hope it is correct. If I'm ever wrong, just let me know in the comments, and I'll put annotations up in the video. The last game, we did see Nest T go for a 7 pool, which is not why he lost the game. He recovered after that very nicely. Nest T just did not keep on expanding. Let his minerals get way too high. His gas way too low. I guess he thought he had the game won when he was at 200-200 with Mutas. And then could transition into Broodlords with Infestors, but Hero just got off the money feedbacks. And that is what ended that game. Well, that's not what ended it. That's what started the game spiraling downhill for Nest T. So, we'll see what happens in this game. Will he make the same mistake? It looks like he is not going to be going for that 7 pool. The probe does make it in, so Hero is going to get a complete scout of Nest T. Going to see no pool just yet. Going to interrupt the mining just momentarily. And there we go. The pool does go down for Nest T. Hero will be building his forge at 15 supply, most likely. He may even go for a Nexus first, but the probe is going to be coming down at 15 supply, which leads me to believe the forge. Yep, there it is. And Hero is possibly one of the best Protoss players out there or he's like code A material and it all goes down to his mindset. It's not like Idra where he just hates the game. It seems like he always loves the game but again there is that language barrier so maybe he is just like Idra and just tilts hardcore but according to his Twitter it just seems like he's so hurt on himself. He loses the game and he's just like oh my god I disgraced my family yada 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 that type of thing and that may have been offensive. My apologies but I think you know what I'm saying if you follow Hero on Twitter if you don't you should. Because all the TL people are just so amazingly nice. We do have him blocking off this one hatch with the pylon. Which does force Nest T to build a few links to take that out. He is going to do the extractor trick. Go up to 19 out of 18 supply. He does have enough money to build that hatch. And he knows about this one pylon here. And there is a drone coming out. Hero is going to be blocking this one hatch. And Nest T is going to attack. It shows signs he wants to take that one hatch. And the probe going to be going off to this one. So Hero is just going to play a game of block the hatcheries. As we do see Nesty trying to take this one. The probe is all over there. He is going to be walking away as a... Uh Okay, he does go back up. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Sorry for the shoddy camera control. We will have these lanes come out and take out this one cannon. The pylon doesn't get cancelled. Looks like it will slowly get taken out soon as these lings do come by. Hero is building a cannon right now, getting a gateway up. He does have his probe just camping out right here. In case the lings decide not to attack this pylon and try to do a run by, he could just throw up another cannon because the cannon will only take out two of the lings of the six that do a run by. And uh, I don't think Hero knows that he, if he has gas or not. No, he doesn't know. If Four lings do get by and the speed completes while Hero, I mean while Nessie is in Hero's base. That is just bad news bears. We do have this one probe going to be coming out and just looking by. He's going to sneak back to this one hatch and he may try cannon rushing it again. As uh, we don't have any overlord here. Here we go. The probe is going to be coming down. Sees that one hatch. I think he stayed out of vision of it. There we go. The cannon is going to be built. And we have Nest T trying to take a double expansion right now. These lings are going to be coming up, checking out this third base. As Hero does get this pylon up. And they're just looking all around for any type of forward pylons. We do have Nest T going to be just injecting on that one hatch. This queen going to be walking her way down on to the natural. Just to hang out there as he is building another one on that main. And uh, going to the worker count, it is 25 to 28. We do have two pylons being built, and Nest T does see this. Somehow he gets a queen here. I don't know where this queen came from, where she walked from, but there is a queen at this third base with these links. It is going to be enough to cancel both of those cannons, and Hero is going to lose yet another probe. And the queen is going to be injecting. Nest T does have the gold base, and since Hero did go for this forge fast expand, with all that creative, like, funky cannon play, he's not going to have his warp gates done until around, I want to say, 8 minutes? 
maybe 8.30, maybe a little bit later. Generally, when you go for the cannon before the gateway, it does finish around 7.20. But we did see Hero build a lot more stuff. The one stalker is coming down. That does drain Supreme as there is no lings with speed, so he can just kite these lings all day. But as he's doing this, Nesty is just going to be able to rebuild a lot. He can lose these lings because he has such a good mineral income right now. You can see 500 minerals per minute ahead of Hero. And that Stalker is taking quite a bit of damage from these lings. Zealot now going to be coming to aid this one Stalker. The Stalker will regain his shields, but he has suffered about half his life. We do have a forward pylon being built right here. Actually, two forward pylons being built by Hero as he is supply capped right now. But one pylon almost done with three more gates just about completing. We do have warp gates just about finishing. So this looks like it's going to be some type of timing. Hero is going for blink. It looks like the Twilight Council is halfway done. Nest, he does have two overlords perched to come in. And will he come in right when Whoopgates does finish? We'll see how well he knows the timing of Hero. As that Whoopgates has now just completed the overlords, not going to be coming in just yet, so he's missing the timing just a little bit to scout what Hero is doing. Three gates and the Twilight Council do finish. Will he get charged or blink? My guess is going to be blink. As he does morph in a lot more zealots, maybe he could get charred. That would definitely be odd, but I have seen some players doing those zealots just be running right in. He's gonna try to take out this spine crawler. The queens don't have enough to transfuse. The germs get pulled off, so only one zealot can attack that spine. And Hero will not be coming out ahead there. One queen does go down, but he lost four zealots to pretty much that one queen. Four workers have died thus far. We do have four pylons all throughout the map. Four more zealots being built. We do have Blink on the way. These zealots just look like they're trying to keep the ling count low. And then the Blink Stalkers are coming. They're trying to force out Roaches as Blink Stalkers will do very good against any type of Roach play. Five Roaches on the way. The probe does come up into Nesty's main trying to get up a scout. And looks like Hero will get the complete scout. Wait, is he going to see that lair? He is building up another Fort Pylon inside of Nesty's base. He's going to have Pylons absolutely everywhere. These zealots trying to hold on for as long as they can. Nice micro seeing those zealots just kite backwards. Will he be able to take out all these lings? The roaches do come. Takes out that forward pile. And yes, Hero does take out all of those lings. Hero losing just slightly more than Nesty right now. But uh, looks like he is getting his third base up by the 10 minute mark, which is definitely good. Keep in mind though, Nesty has the gold base. And this base will be relatively easy to defend. So Nesty will be going four bases easily. And with that layer finishing, we will have Muta play on the way. Those lings are going to come and take out this forward pylon. Does he know about that second one? No, he doesn't. So this pylon is going to go down. That won't turn Hero Supply upside down quite yet. And this one pylon is now in the danger zone. We do have Zealots on this one high gun. Looks like they did take out a queen. And no, Nesty does not know about the pylon. Doesn't even have the slightest idea. Lots of sentries in the back for Hero. He is getting his plus two weapon upgrades. Do those lings have plus one carapace? No, they don't, but that is just completing. And if Zealots have the uh, plus one weapon damage over the Kirpe, so 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, that will allow Zealots to two-shot Lings instead of three-shotting them, which makes them so much more cost-effective. We do have Nesty going to be taking his fourth base, and Hero going to be walling off above these rocks just in case these do go down. Nesty does have a relatively scary force. His care pace upgrade is done. And he could also get that because it benefits both his roaches and lings. Meanwhile, Hero going for blink stalkers with zealots. And is he using this Twilight Council for anything else? Does not have charge. And Nesty still has not really come in to scout Hero one bit. And doesn't even know about the third base, but I guess he just assumes that Uri is taking out these rocks just to be safe. He knows he wants those out sometime. And now those lings are going to be coming in, but there's plenty of units here to defend that off. Nesty does back off. These, this ramp being down does open up, so Hero could, I mean, Nesty could do run buys, but Hero does re-wall that off. And looks like he is going to be moving out with his Blink Stalkers and Zealous. This army supply looking like it is in Nesty's favor. But you do have the uh, force field advantage for Hero. He has so much energy stored up on these sentries. And he's going to be so strong for this attack. Throwing off a few force fields, just being off a few lings. Will take out the creep tumors. Blinking up two stalkers just to finish that off. Taking out another tumor. And right now, even though Nesty has that larger army, he cannot really engage Hero because of the force fields. And all that energy the sentries have saved up. The stalkers now taking out their sh uh, taking health damage as the shields went down. But you did see Hero blink. 
soon as that was the case, spreading out the damage, I don't think Hero really lost a single unit there. And just building more and more stalkers, that's going to be good for when Nest he makes that Muta switch as he is getting 9 Mutas out. Doesn't have the gas up at this base when this hatch does finish a little bit sloppy. You always want the gas done when the base finishes when you are disturbed on gas 900 to 200. So he definitely needs that gas income as soon as possible. Muta's now going to be flying up into this main. Going to do quite a bit of damage. The cannon is morphing in. Hero is going to. Is he going to pull back? What is he doing? Just going to be pulling his probes down to his natural. There we go. Looks like he wants to come in, but Nesty gearing up to do a run by hoping Hero does overcompensate. And looks like these few stalkers are going to push the mutas back here. Uh, Nesty does come in, but Hero still had the units here. Those units do not get to do a thing. And I was really surprised his mutas just didn't do a little bit more damage in the main. Looks like he does know about that forward pylon, so he is going to be taking this one out. And that will uh, pretty much supply cap Hero. Now he's at 148 out of 150, getting a Temple Oka so he can deal with these mutas. We did see in the last game, Hero has some astonishing muta control. As in, he can control where the mutas are and storm them. Or maybe Nesty's just bad at muta control, which is absurd. Of course, Hero just is so good at dealing with mutas. And we'll see if he makes the same mistake this game. Will Nest he keep on taking bases as he does approach being maxed out with Mutas at 70 workers to the 65. This Mutas coming in, going to take out a lot of Stalkers. And the unit tab right now does show 17 Roaches, 21 Mutas, 6 Queens, and 26 Links. The Mutas now saying, oh, we can keep on killing you guys, actually. So they're going to take out even more Stalkers. And the Mutas love it when the Stalkers come in these small, small numbers. Some very nice blinks from here. Was he losing those stalkers? Did they live? I think he saved them actually. Darkshine is being built right now for Hero. And uh, Nesty, does he have detection as base? Looks like a spore color there with mines. Nothing at this base. Nah, spore color there. And a spore color is main, so it looks like he's relatively safe against DT play. And that storm is also now starting. Did Nesty see the Temple of Archives? It can almost guarantee he did not oh my god even the mutas had a rain on here's base for a little bit they did not see the temple okay so he does not know storm is on the way plenty of stalkers just sitting in this middle line gets the insta blink back the mutas do target down that one cannon and there are enough mutas here we can just start taking out these stalkers but some nice blinking from here is starting to split up his stalkers so those mutas don't really do their splash attack Really nice control for Hero, but the Muta's just so many in numbers. 200 supply to 138. Nesty just so far ahead right now. That may be why he is getting that Dark Shine, but Nesty just saw it. The question is, did he click on it to know exactly what was building? Hero is going to need something to come back in this game. That is a lot of Muta's. They are... How many Muta's is that? That is 24 Muta's. He is getting his Infestation Pit now. And Nest, he gets his Broodlords out relatively soon when he maxes out on Mutas. I have seen players go for just mass Muta up to like 25 minutes. And oh no! Hero, that one probe, oh my god, he is pulling a J Dong right now. Oh my god, that Stalkers just can't come in. And Nest, he is doing more damage than he should be right now. The army of Hero just not there because he got the Troll Probe. Oh my god! What is going on, J Dong? If you don't know, Jay Dong did something similar in one of his games very recently. Oh, oh there he goes. Just blinks past that probe. If I was here right now, I would be killing my own probe. Just like, oh my god. Ugh. That's not what Hero wanted when he was not ahead in this game. But it looks like he defended that relatively well. Nesty has killed 30 workers so far. But that was not game ending. But oh my god, Hero. Man. And those drones no longer really mining on these gold bases. They don't need minerals right now. As Nesty is at 4.9k out of 500. Again, just sitting on these bases. Once he gets these mutas, Nesty not really exp expanding. And I can't really figure out why he's not. 500 minerals, 600 gas. He needs more gas, but he just does not care. He's like, I. Mutas are good, man. Mutas are really good. I can just take you out. But Hero, blinking those stalkers. We will have that hive. I think it is completed. No, it is not. 
But Hero is easily in this game right now. 160, 170 supply, 2, 200. Nest T needs to expand everywhere. Has 5.2k minerals. And, uh, we'll see. He is on 4 base to Hero's 3 base. That gold base relatively mined out. And uh, we do have DTs going around the map. This one is just on patrol, waiting for Nesty to keep on expanding. As we do have another big Muta attack, but these Stalkers are just in such a big number. The Mutas can't really do that much. 194 supply to 176. We do have Roaches coming in. And now Nesty is just trying to trade supplies right now. Just trying to prevent Hero from getting maxed out. But Storm's coming down. Hero being so cost effective right now. The Roaches falling. The Mutas don't want a piece of this. Roaches will die, but that hive is now completing this. Will allow Nesty to build corruptors and go into Broodlords. As now the mutas do come in. Another big storm does go off. You can see a lot of those mutas just taking so much damage. None of them have really fallen. Maybe two or three. But they are all in the yellow slash red. And that is the power of storm. Nesty not really injecting on that one hatch. We do have DTs going still in between those two bases. It looks like they did snipe that one hatch. Nest T may want to come back and use transfusion. These queens relatively high on energy. Now going to start that injects again. Does he have much? Let's see, all his hatches are here. He has 18 lava, so he's not really needing lava. But he could be transfusing these mutas and keeping them alive just a little bit longer. It's too early in the red. DTs for here just go between the bases, making sure Nest T not taking any expansions. And this one DT does have five kills, so maybe he's killed Nest T's attempts to uh, take that base. We do have the mutas coming back in. Those probes do stop mining as the roach is now going to be coming in. That greater spire is on the way. Adrenal glands on the way. Plus three attack is on the way with plus three care pace. Hero at three arrows, so those roaches will be three three relatively shortly when the stalkers are just at three zero. Storm's going down, taking a lot of, well, they don't take Roaches out. They do quite a bit of damage, but don't quite take them out. And at Nesty, he can trade this right now because he is a hero just completely pretty much starving on both minerals and gas. So trading Nesty can do. He is getting 11 Corruptors right now. Will be building a lot of Bird Lords. But man, could he benefit off of extra base? He's at 54 drones. So at least he's not really overproducing on drones. He's not oversaturated really on any base, which is good. But he doesn't have the income that he should, which of course is not good. As you do see, it's 24 minutes of the game. He just cannot insta remax. Hero actually taking the supply lead right now. Could Hero take out Nest T yet again and off the same mistake? We do have Nest T taking his fifth base finally. Hero, though, gonna be taking his fourth base. We will have Broodlords down the map relatively shortly. Ten Broodlords are morphing, and that is quite a bit. Those Mutas, what are their upgrades at? They're at 2 0, so those Broodlords will be at 2 0. What are those Lings at? Uh huh. Do -do 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 -do. Looks like gonna be at 2 3. Maybe a 1 3. Not too good of upgrades, but better than nothing. All the Broodlords are finishing. We don't have any type of Stargate out for heroes, so he w is so far away from being able to do the toilet. Nest T does have no Infestors, so this is going to be a little bit interesting. The, nothing's going to really stop these uh, Stalkers from blinking underneath the Stalkers besides some Roaches and Lings. And the Lings will go down relatively quickly to all the Storms. So we'll see how this works. Nesty just moving out with a buttload of Broodlords. And here we go. The Stalkers do get a blink off. And now the Muta's going to be, I mean, the Broodlords are going to be doing what they can. So many Broodlords going out so quickly. Storm's going down on those Roaches. Muta's going to do what they can. The army supply for Nesty is definitely great. 143 versus the 85. And I think he may just have enough Broodlords versus these Stalkers. He has pretty much a, uh... For every Broodlord there is, there are 3 Stalkers as there are 10 more Stalkers now just morphing in. But that is definitely a lot of Broodlords. And here we go. We do have everything coming in. Those Broodlords going to be taking out this gold base as the storm does go down. We don't have a uh, hero going to be really mining after this fourth base does fall. And this Broodlord is just so good at setting up a siege. 
Nesty is maxed out and uh, starting to stock up minerals and gas yet again. Nesty is in a very good spot, but here we go. The Stalkers do blink underneath the blue list. Storm going down. Those Mutas taking a bath right now. And they don't like water. They are like cats, man. They don't take damage, and they do not like storms. But the Brutalist did not really fall in that fight. He still has plenty. That Nexus does fall. And there goes a lot of heroes' income. The probe count 35, 250, and hero only going to be mining off of one base. Nesty doubling hero supply, so it looks like this game, he will be taking it. He, I think he made the mistake he made last game is when he maxed out on mutas. He didn't keep on building bases, but he does eventually equal up and start taking this. We do have DTs going to do some damage to the roaches, but he, uh, Nesty just has it so, so much. Stalkers are at 3-3. Three, three. I mean, the Roach is at 3-3. Three, three. Stalk is at 3-0. Oh. Hero just buying time that, uh, Pylon... Looks like he's just gonna ignore and just go for all the, uh, bases. There's really not too much to say. Broodling's up there just doing something, but, uh... This is pretty much it. This is the nail in the coffin right here. Hero will lose this game, and I have to be happy. I'm happy. It was like a 1-1 one -one win. Hero showed he can beat Nesty, and Nesty showed he can take out Hero. And we won't have a finale game, unfortunately. Hopefully one day soon we will get another replay from these two players. Stalker's going to be blinking back, and uh, the Nexus, slowly but surely, it will be falling. The army supply, 111, 230. And uh, Tassador can't save Hero now. There's just too much out on the map. But Nesty not giving up. You can see he's still building units. He, he's playing this game till the last second. He is not just an A move saying, okay, this game's over. He is playing it out. As you do see, just constantly building units still. And just streamlining them across the map. And if Hero didn't do that J Dong mistake, would the game have turned out different? I don't know. And that is the shame when you're such a high profile player and make such a big mistake like that. And here we go, Infested Tan's gonna be coming out with these roaches. Finish this one Nexus off. And there we go, GG comes out from Hero. And this time I won't forget to go up into SE2 Gears immediately after this game. So we are pulling it up right now. And here we go. We do have APM for Hero at 53. No, he's he's not bronze. Macro APM for Hero 53. Micro 174. Nesty 73. Micro 166. Redundancy for Nesty 33. Hero at 33. I think I backed that up. I'm going to start that over. Let's just rewind. We have Nesty, his macro APM is 73, his micro APM is 166 here, his macro APM at 53, his micro APM at 174. Nesty's redundancy is 33%, while Heroes is at 30%. Means Nesty is a little bit quicker, he has one more EAPM than Hero being at 158, but with 3% more redundancy, who's the quicker player? We won't know really, because that redundancy counter could be inaccurate, 239. At, uh, spam APM versus the 228. Very, very close there. Going into this inject graph, we always love seeing the 10 minute mark. I don't know why I like this so much, but I just do. Nest T, not at his normal, like sub 9%, uh, 9 second. He's at 12.9. Falling a little bit, but he did deal with those cannons. That queen saw some action as stalkers and zealots did some damage. So that may be it. Let's go over to the calculate time. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Uh, actually, it is there. All his hatches actually fell. So, Nesty, not doing his best injects. I mean, yeah, his third base was under siege because he ninja that gold base, but gives him no excuse for his main and everything being that. So, Nesty, not playing his best game right there, at least in the early game. Let's go into the unit tiers. You can see him just building so, a uh, hero building so many tier three throughout the game. Nesty just pretty much builds those 30 Bruins. Like, I'm done, man. Wait, I lied. Two more. So we should see like 32 more to Brood Lords in this uh one thing right here. Let's go to the very end. 
So let's go into the ability groups first. We do have 18 storms, 75 blinks, 29 force fields, 2 guardian shields, 16 morph to gates, 351 attack moves, 42 chronos. We have 8 infested hands, 32 morph to bird lords. I was correct there. 63 spawn tumor, 71 spawn larva, and 345 attack moves. Pretty nice there. Let's go over to the units built throughout the game. We do have 19 DTs, 24 HTs, 11 sentries, 32 zealots, 130 stalkers, 104 probes, versus the 7 festers, 11 corruptors, 110 muters. Oh my god, that's 220 supply just in mutalisks. 234 roaches, 8 queens, 114 lings, 33 overlords, and 159 lings. Uh. And now that we have a little bit more time to kill, I'm going to go back in this game. I'm going to look at exactly how Nesty does inject and his hotkeys. And we'll see here his hotkeys because you guys can like that too. But for some reason, I love watching Zerg players, how they do things. So we're going to lock in Nesty's camo really quick with his muta. So we're going to pause it right now. Just look at what his uh, hatches look like. And we can do that by just going here. So that one almost ready to inject. That one almost ready to inject. That one could be injected. That one almost ready. And these two, are they the same? Yeah. So for some reason, these are on the same hotkey. I don't know why he goes all the way here, but his hatches do start repeating. But you can see, three is his main. That's his natural. And that's his gold base. This is... Does he not have his fourth base hotkey? So yeah, he is missing this base. This hatch is not hotkeyed. It is hotkeyed when they're all hotkeyed, but... Not as individual ones. So his tumors, you can see the queen probably going to stack up energy on this one base. Small mistake there. Maybe he hotkeyed that gold base twice. But I just want to see how he does inject, how quickly he does go back. So we're going to go in. And let's see. Let's go off this. Let's see. There we go. Now this should show what hero, I mean, what Nesty is selecting. Should go when he changes. And he does keep an overlord in his hotkey with mutas. That's a little bit odd. Maybe it is for boxing. It may be reminiscent of broodlord. Not boxing. Stacking. And you did see one inject so far. Did he inject on his main? Did he just do that? No, he didn't. Some players, I know, uh... I only know Last Shadow, do inject via the minimap. It is very, very quick. And also, you don't have to move your camera, but it doesn't look like Nesty did it. So he did just inject on that one base. And now I'm going to morph that Overseer. You can see the other bases do need to be injected, so I'm just curious how fast he does this. There he goes on that one, that one, that one. And you see he did miss that one fourth base because it was not hotkeyed. But I was expecting it to be a little bit faster. Maybe it's because I'm on normal speed and not faster speed. Let's just see how fast that is. Maybe he's just not in his game today or in his element. Let's just double check that. There we go. I have seen him do it a lot faster. It's a lot more entertaining when he does it that fast. But here we go. He is about to be doing this. Going in. Overseer. Controlling his muta, sending them out to attack, then going to do those. Okay, that is pretty quick actually. He is relatively quick with those injects. That normal speed just makes things so much lower. So, Nesty's hotkeys, Muta's on one with one Overlord in it, Roaches and Ling's on another one. No Queen's hotkey, he does hotkey his hatches individually. Here, though, let's see what his hotkeys look like. We have... Stalkers, I guess that maybe is like anti-Muta. A lot of his forces, like his pressure force, Nexus on one. All his Nexus on seven. And here, it doesn't really have that many hotkeys. Let's go 22 minutes. Does he change that up? Five High Templars. Not the most hotkey usage, but he still has pretty much everything hotkeyed. Sentries, of course, on something different. His High Templars on something different. So he keeps all his energy units on separate hotkeys while all his Stalkers do sit on one. You can see, doesn't really have an anti muta Force on a hotkey anymore. Just leaves a few High Templars up here to Storm. And hopefully you enjoy that game. Take care, guys, and that will be it for me. I'll see you.